Welcome to Quail's Knitting Nest. My name is Joy and this is my nest. Today is a beautiful day and I have all the windows open so I'm going to apologize ahead of time for any ambient noise that might pop up during this uh, video. Last episode I was talking about swatching for a baby sweater I was going to make. So here's my swatch. It's not it's all stockinette stitch and it's not completely flat because I didn't wet block it or steam block it. This is going to be a baby sweater and I bought machine washable wool on purpose so that I could wash it. So what I did was I put it in a lingerie bag and I washed, machine washed it on gentle cycle and then I tumbled dry low and this is what it turned out to be. I mentioned before when I made the yellow cardigan for my mother-in-law that in order to get gauge for that I had to go down two needle sizes. The recommended size was a 10 and I had to go down to an 8 to get gauge. For this I would have had to go up, up two needle sizes which is interesting to me because I'm usually a loose knitter uh, so I worked it, this is fingering weight yarn, and I worked the swatch on the size 4 needle. And I liked the fabric that it made, but it wasn't big enough. I would have had to go up probably to at least a 6 to get the gauge that the pattern called for. And I liked this fabric, and I didn't want it to be super loose and drapey because it's going to be a, a baby sweater. So that affected how I worked the pattern, which I will get to in a moment. So this sweater is for my coworker. She is from Liberia in West Africa. I looked up some, I tried to find some pictures of baby clothes for Liberian children, and I came up with zip, nothing. So then I looked for traditional men's clothes and I did find a few pictures which I will put in here so that you can see them and the thing to notice about them is that it's basically a solid shirt with different colored bands on the sleeves at the, at the cuff of the sleeves and then around the neck so that gave me an idea of kind of what I was looking for in a pattern for a baby sweater. So I went on Ravelry, and first I looked for Liberian patterns, which I couldn't find any, and then I looked for African patterns, and I couldn't find any of those. Now, I was specifically looking for a baby sweater in fingering weight yarn, so I was coming up with zero. So then I just went and looked through whatever patterns were there to see if there were any that kind of gave that vibe with the, the solid color and then the contrasting bands around the neck and the, and the cuffs. So I did find one and this is what I ended up knitting. This is called Starshine. And it's by a designer called Kitty Winks Knits. I saw it and I'm like, yeah, that gives me that African vibe. So I knit it up. Another thing regarding the gauge is this is a cardigan, right? So it's worked flat. But in the pattern, the sleeves are knit in the round. And I often have trouble, as do many people, when you switch from flat knitting to circular knitting that your gauge changes. So I did modify the pattern in that regard. I knit the sleeves flat so that my gauge wouldn't change. And then I just sewed up the seam. Uh, I didn't realize until I actually got started knitting this. I don't know why I didn't think about it, but this is a stranded pattern and I'm knitting it flat. <laughs> I'm like, oh my gosh. <laughs> it's not my favorite thing to do 
to knit stranded knitting flat. However, I just did the Arn and Carlos mystery knit along, made this pillow, and all of the pieces in that were knit flat stranded. So I had just gotten a lot of practice doing it. So I bit the bullet and I went ahead and here's the inside. Pearled all those backside rows and then you can see I put a tag in there as well. And I did, in my stash, I had these blue buttons that match perfectly. I was very happy about that because now I don't have to wait till June or July or whenever to go shopping to get my buttons. So I was able to put a... Put now this sweater, I did not wash and dry it, at least not yet. I'm, I might later. But to finish this, I did a steam block. Because the edges, the edges here and here were curling. And it also helped to uh, fix up, I mean, this, the stranded, because the, the stranded portion is so regular, it was very easy to maintain a pretty good tension in this area. So it didn't really need a lot of blocking, but I did give it a little steam. But here along the button band and the bottom band is where it really was curling and needed some, some help. So I steam blocked that. And it's super cute. I like, I really like how it turned out. Very happy with it. Now she's due in August, so I'll probably give this to her in July. And I'm, I'm ready. As you can tell, I made the cardigan for my mother-in-law for Christmas, and then I'm making this for my coworker for July. I'm a, I'm a planner and I like to work ahead. I don't like to work under pressure. And the last thing I have to say about that is that I have this much yarn left. I used just over half of the ball of the blue. This is the king fiber. And then I used only a quarter of the ball of the Hue Loco. Hmm. Stay tuned. See what happens with this. Now this week, I got my summer 2020 issue of Interweave Knits. I have been a subscriber off and on, but since I just looked it up, spring of 2002, so 18 years I've been collecting these, and I have all the ones that I have, I have. There were a few years where I dropped my subscription here and there, but I have almost every issue for the last 18 years on a bookshelf. So this is the new one, and I thought I would just highlight a couple of things in here. The first is that in the editor's column at the very beginning, she mentions that she has started a new podcast too. This one is an audio podcast and it's called The Knitting Nerdist. I looked it up the other day and she already has three episodes. I've only listened to half of the first episode. And when she says The Knitting Nerdist, I mean, she really dives deep into kind of nerdy territory. So the first half of the episode that I listened to was all about The Handmaid's Tale, which is a show on HBO. Um, I haven't watched it, so I don't know anything about it. But on the webpage, if you go to the Interweave Knits webpage where the podcast is, she gives you a description of what they talk about during the episode. And it's a good thing because she gives pictures in the when they're talking on the podcast, it's, she, it's her and another woman, and they're looking at pictures, screenshots from The Handmaid's Tale, and they're talking about, oh, she's wearing this scarf, and this other character is knitting, and, and how is she knitting? It's, it looks strange to me. 
So on the web page, they have those pictures, so I can I could reference back and see what the heck they were talking about because I had no idea. And they they really dive deep into detail about those little things. I haven't finished listening to it, so we'll see. But if you're interested, I'll put a link in the show notes for the Knitting Nerdist podcast. Now this issue is all about lacy summer. Well, it's summer, right? So all of the tops have a summery feel to them. And almost all of them have some kind of lace in them. There's, there's really a theme going on because most of the patterns have like a block of stockinette either at the top or the bottom. And then there's lace on the other portion of it. And then many of the patterns have lace all the way down the back. So for example, this one has lace all the way down the back, but the front just has a little bit of lace at the top. And a lot of the patterns in here are like that. My personal style is that if I'm gonna knit lace, I would most often make the whole garment lace. I didn't do that with my pink cardigan, but it has the lace bands all the way down from top to bottom on both the front and the back. And then the stockinette panels are off to the side. Whereas most of these cardigans or tops. See, this one has stockinette at the top and lace on the bottom, but then there's lace all down the back. This one is my favorite from the issue. I love this lace on the back, and if I were to make this, I would do it all the way down the front also, because I prefer that look. It's a, it's a, Decent issue. It's not probably my favorite. There are some styles in here that I don't really care for. But there's a few that I like. And if I made any of them, it would be that one that I just showed you. Now, there's an article in here which is really good. It's called A Primer on Knitted Lace. And it really dives deep into all the things you know or need to know about knitting lace. So if you're not very experienced with lace, this is excellent. Plus, it even gives some experienced knitters a little, a couple of tips that you'd be like, oh, I should try that. Like switching how you wrap your yarn over so that the yarn over on the right side is the same size as the, as the yarn over on the left side. Oh, there's another thing in here, what she calls easy no wrap short rows. There's a little sidebar here on one of the patterns. Easy, no wrap short rows. So they're kind of like a regular wrap and turn short row except without the wrap. So I'm intrigued by this and I think I might wanna try it and see how I like it. Cause I've tried others. I've tried um, the yarn over short rows and the German short rows. And I know a lot of people like those short rows, but they're not for me. I, I really prefer the wrap and turn. Um, so this is basically the wrap and turn without the wrap. So I'm gonna try it and see how it is. And then the last thing I wanted to mention from the issue, there's another podcast that Interweave does, and this one's been going for a while. This one's called Fiber Nation. There's a big ad for it in the back of the magazine. This one is not so much knitting related, it's just fiber in general related. And this is also a deep dive. Uh, I think I've only listened to one of these episodes. They're pretty long, they're like an hour, I think. Uh, so it's not something that I would spend a lot of time listening to. I do have, I think, at least one friend that listens to it. So that's another thing to think about or look into if you're interested in other podcasts that you are that you want to listen to. So that's that. And then finally today, what am I working on now? I wanted to give you an update on the socks that I'm making for my husband. 
They're coming along. Here we go. All right, so before I showed you the toe and a little bit of the foot. So I've gotten past the heel. I did a short row heel done exactly the same way I did the toe, but I decided not to use a contrasting color because I'm thinking, I hope, I have enough yarn to make it all the way up the cuff to how long it needs to be. I am about, about halfway up the cuff. Uh, I don't know. <laughs> we'll see <laughs> if it makes it or not. Now on the for the short rows on the short row heel and the toe. I just mentioned talking about short rows, right? Uh, that I've tried the yarn over short rows and the German short rows. I've not used either of those on a heel before. I've used those for like short row sheeping on the back of the neck. Um. I have used the yarn over short row for a heel, but I find it hard to keep track of because then you're, you have pairs. Every stitch has a paired yarn over and it, to me, it just gets a little complicated and confusing. This short row that I use for a sock heel, I have, I don't use for, uh, short rows around the neck because of the way it looks. However, for the heel, I think it works perfect. And this I learned from Arna, Arna and Carlos. He did a tutorial. I'll try to find the link and put it in the show notes for you. He did a tutorial on how he does short rows for his heels. And I tried it once and I really liked it. So now I've been using it. This is probably the third or fourth pair of socks I've made using that short road method which I really like. And the thing about it that I like is that it's very solid. Like the, you don't get any holes and it's also not bulky. When I was doing wrap and turn short rows for hot heels, I would be wrapping on the way down and then wrapping on the way back. And then there'd be all these loops that you have to pick up. And although it gives a good sh um, short row on the outside, on the inside, there's kind of a bulk with all those wraps that gives you kind of a seam. This doesn't do that. It gives you the nice, firm, non holy short row with no seam or leftover extra yarn inside. And what he does is he'll knit down. So, for example, here I had 36 stitches and I went down to, I think, 14 or maybe 12. So you short row from stitch 36, 35, 34, 33, you go back and forth, one stitch shorter every row. And on the way down, you don't do anything. You just knit, turn, knit, turn. And then on the way back, when you're going 14, 15, 16, 17, as you're increasing, you knit two together at the gap. And then to make up for the stitch that you lost, when you knit two together, you do a lifted increase. And that's all there is to it. It's very simple and it makes a great join at the short row. So I'm about halfway up this cuff for this. We'll see how long it takes and whether or not I have enough yarn to finish the cuff. Stay tuned. I hope that you are doing well during the stay home, stay at home order. Some people I know are getting a little bit of freedom. Some stores are opening, opening up, but where I live, we're still under stay at home order through June 1st. Let me know how you're doing, what you're up to, what you're knitting. It's always fun to hear about what's going on. I hope that you are well. Take care. Bye-bye.